So, will you pray <laughs> with me and for me? As we enter into that gift of stillness, entering our time in the arms of the Great Mother. The blissful one, the bountiful one. I invite you wherever you are seated to feel yourself held. Sense the back of your body and every place that it is touching the solid bench or chair, wherever you're sitting at home, And let that feeling of being held allow your body to soften, to surrender, and to openness. feeling held in the sweet comfort held in sorrow held in joy And in the quiet, as we listen to the beautiful sound of Roger playing the dulcimer, sensing that creative spark that is your life, let that spark just be in this moment. in gratitude for the Ma that brought you into this world, for all of those human and non-human extra 
more than human beings who have loved you into who you are today. And come fully back into this space, into this moment. I'm going to keep myself sitting right here grounded. <laughs> oh, yeah, actually. Uh, oh, thanks. Um, so as I was, <clears throat> as I was thinking about um, what message to give for Mother's Day, and Roger and I were talking this week, I felt pulled to this idea of the divine feminine, I love how in unity we have this sense of God, the word God, God as principle, as underlying source, as non-gendered. And yet I think there's real beauty in exploring this sense of the sacred in these archetypes, in these energies, not in the gendered way that it has come to be in a binary over time. So I read an interesting article in my exploration called The Divine Feminine, When Your Mind Cannot Make Sense of Your Experiences. <clears throat> I'm going to do this too so I can read the actual passage. Spirituality does not really mean anything except accepting yourself as a soul that is having a physical experience. And even that is not spirituality's definition because spirit, the soul, and consciousness are not concepts that can really be understood by the mind. And that's a good thing. The author goes on to say, happenings in the world beyond the veil are experienced by your soul and consciousness, and your consciousness precedes your mind. The mind can try to compartmentalize, to make an equation, and even find a pattern for things that happen on a soul level. And these functions of the mind, trying to understand soul-based experiences, may even work for a time. But because consciousness is always expanding, as well as our souls, the mind inevitably will not be able to keep up. And again, this is good. Surrendering to the limitations of the mind and the limitless of the soul is one of the most spiritual things you can do. So much of what we miss about spirituality and spiritual awakening is that the path or paths of enlightenment follow themes and archetypes that have existed on multiple timelines and dimensions of this planet. In the world of myth and story then, all around the world, there are those myths of the creator God, the destructive God, the forces that bring life to creation, of trying to understand what brought us here. How did this spinning blue planet come to be? And what is our place in it? So as I had have journeyed into the years of my life that brought me here, I think about the times when I really needed to have that decisive energy that we think of, that we describe as masculine. When movement, action was what was needed. And yet I also recognize, in fact, and when I think about what drew me here to this moment, to being able to say yes in a way quickly that might have seemed impulsive, it was born, that yes, that action was born of deep, deep contemplation, of surrendering to the way my life was in those moments, in those last few months of my time at the school where I was teaching, that felt 
like chaos. And in that chaos, I had a choice. I did dig in because that's what was needed. But that sense of surrender to seeing that which was absolutely in my path as not something I could swashbuckle my way through was actually really important for me. So in the month-long journeying of what was going to be next, there, was, there were mornings of prayer. There were mornings of writing. There were walks where I raged out loud to the friends who could hear that from me. But all of that deep, receptive work that we think of as the feminine energy was fertile ground. So that when I called in my next job, the people of integrity and joy and collaboration and the opportunity arose, I could say yes, because all of that other work had been going on. When I called in the home that would feel safe and welcoming, and then I saw it on my brother's you know, camera as he was showing me through and I was in Beverly and he was in the house, I could say yes because all of that deep knowing was fertile ground. And so that to me is part of the gift of the balance. When you think of the yin-yang symbol, right? It's not a, a straight line. It's this and this. They're curved. They each contain a piece of the other. In our own inner worlds, keeping that in balance is sometimes work and sometimes it is easy and fertile ground. When I have a decision to make now at 61 and three quarters, I trust <laughs> that process differently than I did when I was 35, when I was picking a college. I can think of all of those ways that my understanding of how I approach what feels like a dilemma has shifted. I don't always stay in a Zen place when I am faced with that dilemma. Anybody who knows me well knows that. <laughs> we are invited always in community to help each other find what is longing to be birthed in us. How are we answering the call to awaken to the divine essence in all beings, in all experiences? When I look around this room, I know some of you have held sorrows that have cracked your heart open. I look around this room and I recognize that each of us has had sorrow that has cracked our hearts open. In that fertile ground then, of a heart that is cracked open. We can come with strength and surrender. We can recognize the gift of all that has come to feed us that brought us to this moment. And we can take that food and grow our best future forward together, individually it, as cells in the body of the world, in the body of all creation. There are times when it is such a gift to be able to use our beautiful mind to, to think about a problem, to come up with options, to analyze an issue. And there are times when we have to lean into the knowledge that is underneath that, 
that precedes that, that holds that. So as we give shape to our lives, can we bring into balance all of those energies in ourselves? Recognizing, actually, Dave, your poem was perfect from Mark Nepo this morning, that idea of his grandmother and that early memory as a three-year-old of meeting this ancient woman who spoke in a language that he couldn't understand, but to recognize 50 years later that maybe that voice in his ear was feeding his love of poetry, his poet's heart in the world. I know on Mother's Day, as both a mother and as a daughter, I am unbelievably richly blessed. To be at this point in my life where I have an adult relationship with my children and we've navigated our way through some of the turmoil of teenage years and the heartaches of, of years now, of moments now, we are so fortunate. And I know as a daughter to have my parents in their 80s that still know who I am and still know who they are that as we're at that threshold of what will come with them, we know each other deeply. And I know many people whose longing to have a child did not come to fruition. I know many people whose longing to give birth to creativity has led to lives of passion and art making and social justice work. In the midst of where our lives are, we give birth to our own dreams. And we do that in collaboration with our highest calling from the source of all. From that creative force in the world that is beyond our understanding, that is housed within us, and that is beside us in each other and in every bit of creation. So I'm going to lead us through a poem about ancestral treasure by Shailen Harkin, and then I'm going to just do a short, almost a meditation, a little visualization to lead us into that space that we are in right now to recognize the gift of the divine feminine, but to recognize where we come from. Who has given birth to us in this moment? <clears throat> and so first, from Jalen Harkin. <clears throat> Ancestral treasure. Your ancestors have passed down their wounds like a growing collection of gems for your inheritance. Don't resent this. They weren't ready to be mined and collected. They weren't ready to be valued. You have the technology now. You know how to dig deep. You know now not to fear your worth. You know that within every bright, shining wound is a nugget of compassion, a jewel of wisdom they have saved up for you. Now, feel deeply blessed to be driven finally into these inner tunnels of self and history, cashing in on this trove in the sacred chest of your heart will alchemize all old shameful stories into diamonds of laughter and tears. Cashing in this trove will transform the heavy bag of sorrows your ancestor carried into tokens of priceless light. And so now I invite you, if you're comfortable, to close your eyes.
If your body is able and you would like to stand for this, you may. Otherwise, just stay seated and feel yourself held. But I'm going to invite you in the space that you are in to sense behind you the mother who gave you birth, the father whose seed helped create you. Sense the line of ancestors behind them, your grandparents, your great-grandparents, your great-great-grandparents, the ancestors that you do not know but whose DNA courses in your body in every cell. Sense that line of your ancestors stretching back and back and back. Feel that line of your ancestors rooting you, tethering you in the most beautiful, holy way. Sensing not only ancestral sorrows, but ancestral healing. Pulsing in the cord of life. And now sense your whole body. Letting your arms gently stretch out to the side and feel your siblings of birth if you have them, of friendship if you have them. The family that you have drawn to yourself in love and friendship and feel those branches stretching out on each side, your left and your right. And now bring your hands to, over your heart. And if you have children or grandchildren or nieces and nephews, picture them growing forth from your heart, energetically stretching into the future, a future that we cannot carry. but that we help give birth to for them. And feel that line from your heart blazing as light out into the future generations, blazing forward and forward, tethered to the starlight tethered to the stardust that you are made of. And then breathing in and out, feel yourself so rooted and so expansive. every cell of your body, a healthy, loving, vibrant cell in the body of the world. Limitless. One. And so it is.